Hi, and welcome to Commodity Market Analysis. Uh, today we're going to uh, do, do some basic forecasting with futures. But first, some background. Uh, we're assuming that you have already a data set of time series data. So, so you have prices across time, okay? And what you want to do, if you want to, 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 to forecast, you split your data into an in sample or trading training data and an out of sample um, a test data so the in sample data is where you train your data or or you calibrate your your uh, model you train your model you calibrate your model uh, you which means that you just find the coefficients of the model and here you look at for example r squared to to see uh how well the the uh, the model performs and um, uh, you see which which coefficients uh, are significant and um, later uh, when you when you forecast you use the out of sample the out of sample uh, data partition okay and this is because you should not use um, the the uh, the training data uh, as a measure of how well the the model performs as a um, forecasting model because you can you can get an arbitrarily good fit in the in sample or of the in sample data um, by adding new coefficients or new variables uh, to your to to your model but often you would see that uh, even if you get a very high fit in the in sample of the in sample data by using your model um, you will get a lower fit when you try to use it for forecasting and and this kind of overfitting uh, might be a problem so that's why it's really important to to split your data into an in sample and an out of sample uh, partition just make sure that that the the sample size of the out of sample uh, partition is at least 48 otherwise you can't uh, make any any inferences and you can't really trust your your analysis okay so what do you do um, here in the out of sample you create forecasts and then you you compare the forecast with the with the actual obtained value uh, for that time period and you calculate the statistics so then you can um, for example calculate the the variance of the forecast error the forecast error is is just the forecast minus the the obtained price the actual price and you can uh, just cal cal calculate the uh, the variance and you can also calculate the autocorrelation um, to to see if if you are systematically making forecast mistakes and and a very popular uh, measure is the root mean squared error where you just take the forecast uh, errors you square them you take the mean of them and then you take the square root of that mean okay so and and this makes it easy to to uh, uh, compare different models and approaches so you would uh, uh, generally go for the model with the lowest root mean squared error that would be the best model
So let's take an example. Here we have some sugar data and we have monthly prices of the spot price, spot price of sugar. And we also have the futures price for delivery at that time, at time t, but this futures price is set at t minus one, which is one month ago. So for example, the January uh, 2000 uh, contract, uh, the price of this was set in, in de December in 1999. Okay. So, and we have here uh, 243 uh, data points. And you see that if we just zoom out, I've partitioned this into a training set where we, which we use to, to calibrate our model and uh, the test set, uh, which we use to, to uh, generate um, uh, forecasts and get the forecast errors to, to assess the forecast ability of different models. Okay. This in sample data, I've put in a separate sheet and this auto sample data, I've also put in a different sheet. So let's make a model to try to explain the spot price by using the futures price. And, and this will just be a regression. So we go to data and data analysis and we go to regression, press OK. And the Y range would be the spot price because this is what we are going to explain. And the X range will be the futures price because this is uh, what we are going to use to try to explain next month's uh, spot price, right? Remember that the, the futures price is set one month before delivery. Okay. And we do have labels and we can, uh, put the, the result in a new worksheet. Okay. So we click. Okay. Let's see. Just increase the size here so you can watch better and what we have what's interesting is here we have the intercept in our model it's negative 0.51 and it's significant because the t statistic is larger than 1.96 and we have the coefficient on the futures price. It's one, it's 1 1.03. And it's also significantly, significantly different from zero. Okay. So now we can use these coefficients to create, um, um, a forecast. Then, then we go to the auto sample. Uh, okay and we make a Y hat or an estimate of the spot price. So how do we do it? We take the, uh, the, uh, oh, sorry, we have here, we take the uh, intercept, the constant, and we add the coefficient for the spot, uh, for the futures price, times, okay, this uh, asterisk is times um, the futures price, okay? And we get, by using the information of the futures price, we get an estimate 
of the spot price of 15.44 and actually you see that our our estimate is is not half bad so what is the error it's the uh, estimate minus the spot price okay and the the estimate is 0 0.01 now we would like to uh, to just drag this down, so we have to uh, lock the the cells uh, or some of the cells, and that would be the uh, regression coefficient for the intercept. We lock it, and the regression intercept for the the uh, coefficient on the futures. We lock it by pressing the F4 button and enter. Okay, so now we have locked it. And then we can just drag the, uh, the model down and we see that we have the same, uh, same references, but a new, a new uh, futures price so the <coughs> sorry the estimate at time t minus one of the spot price at time t is 15.27 okay um and then we just take the error and calculate and we get a bigger error this time uh, probably because the the uh, the futures price was a bit uh, higher than the realized spot price. What we what we can do is just to double click in the corner and control down arrow. We get to the bottom. We see that we have generated forecasts and uh, forecast errors. Uh, for for the whole out of sample uh, data partition, okay. What we can do now is to uh, check our forecast errors. So what we would uh, uh, do first is to look at the um, the mean of the uh, the forecast error. So what kind of bias do do we have? We take the average of the forecast errors and we see that on average we miss by 0.27 uh, dollars and uh, so we are constantly or on average we are overshooting okay and what what is the uh, dispersion and the standard deviation Okay, we take the sample standard deviation of the forecast error, okay? And uh, we see that we, we have a uh, forecast error with mean 0.27 and standard deviation of 0 0.35. Uh, this does not tell us if the model is good or bad. It just tells us um, uh, something about our our distribution. So we have to compare it to something. And uh, one of the more popular uh, statistics to calculate is the RMSE. And for this, we need the uh, the squared error. And which is quite low for some of the the errors and let's see then we take the mean of these squared errors because we have root mean squared error and then we have to take the square root of this again
and as such, and we have a root mean squared error of 0 0.44. This we can use to, uh, to uh, um, see if our model is better than other models. So if we go to the naive, <coughs> sorry, approach, then we just assume that the 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 uh, price estimate of of this month is just the price last month. Okay, so here we need to find the uh, March twenty sixteen price. That would be our estimate for the April. 2016 price and we have that in the in sample section okay here you have the March 2016 price and we just put it in here okay let's just uh, take down the number of, of digits okay let's see and <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. We have here the the uh, estimate for May would be the April price, right? So then we can just copy down. Just make sure that we do not have too many numbers, and we can calculate the error of the naive approach. So here. We had the March 2016 price would be our estimate for April 2016. And the error is 13.31 minus 15.43. Okay. And we can just copy down and we can calculate the squared error equals the squared error and we just get rid of some digits okay and we can just check how the naive method is doing um, so what we can do is to uh, just copy these over here because this was our error okay we can go up here this is the error and our bias is actually lower than the our our statistical method okay uh, however the standard deviation is quite a bit higher it's one one point thirteen um, so would you rather use the low bias, high standard deviation or the high bias, low standard deviation model? Well, this is where the root mean squared error comes in. And you see that the root mean squared error is 0.44 for the, um, for our regression model. And it's 1.12 for the naive method. So on, on average, our errors are, are lower for the uh, regression method. One other method to consider would be to, to just take the, the futures price and treat it as an estimator of, of the spot price. Okay. And this is quite easy because um our uh, our estimate is just the futures price for last month okay and the error is just the futures price last month minus the spot price the realized spot price okay and then we also calculate the the squared errors okay And we just take two digits and we copy down 
get rid of these. Okay. And then we can just calculate the bias and the standard deviation of our simple model. Okay. And we see that uh, our bias is actually lower. Our standard deviation is higher. But uh, would you uh, exchange the, uh, the, the, the regression model for this simple model? In this case, uh, you might, because if you look at some more digits, they are very equal. They are quite equal. Okay. So, so, so in this case, our regression model uh, might not be be sufficiently good to to uh, uh, to uh, spend the time on. Okay, you could rather use just the the futures price and get basically the the same result. Okay, uh, so that's how you can. Uh, that's how you can can compare uh, different models and different approaches um, when it comes to uh, to forecasting. Uh, I really hope you found this lecture uh, useful. So thank you.